Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at reduced row echelon form of a matrix. So we've already taken a look at what putting a matrix in row echelon form looks like, and now we're going to talk about taking that row echelon matrix and turning it into reduced row echelon form. So what we've done up to this point is we've taken a system of equations and we've turned it into an augmented matrix, but then we took that augmented matrix and we performed some operations on it to turn it into a row echelon matrix. And then our next step is going to be to take this row echelon matrix and put it in what's called reduced form. And what you'll notice about reduced form of this matrix is we've got ones along this main diagonal, but then the other entries are all zeros. And this is actually a way for us to get the answers from our matrix without needing to put the variables back in there. So in this matrix, since the one is in the first column, that's our X column. So this top row is really telling us that X equals two. This middle row, since the one is in the middle column, that was our Y column, that's telling us that our Y value is negative one. And then this last row, since the one is in the third column, that was our Z column. So that's telling us that Z is equal to three. So in our last video, I showed you the process to take this system of equations, turn it into an augmented matrix, and then take that augmented matrix and put it in row echelon form. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you the steps necessary in order to take this row echelon matrix and put it in reduced row echelon form. And when we're working on reduced row echelon form, we wanna have that stair step pattern of ones going along the main diagonal like we just saw, and zeros everywhere else. And I always like to start on the bottom when I'm doing reduced row echelon form because this bottom row should already look like it needs to in order to be in reduced row echelon form. Now we are gonna have to do a little bit of work with the middle row, so that zero, one, negative two, negative seven row. And what we need to do is turn that negative two in the third entry, we need to turn that into a zero. But we have to be careful not to change either one of the first two entries because we need those to stay as a zero and a one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bottom row and I'm going to multiply it by two because then that should give me a two in the third column which I can add to this negative two in order to zero that out. So if I take two times zero, I get zero. If I take two times zero, I get zero again. Two times one is two and two times three is six. So then when I add these together, I get zero, one, zero, negative one, which is what I need that middle row to look like with the zero, one, zero. So I'm gonna fill that in as the second row in my reduced form that we're building over here. And then I need to do some work with the top row. So we've got that one, negative two, one, seven, and I'm gonna work on that negative two first. So in order to get rid of that negative two, we're gonna need a positive two in that second entry. So what I'm gonna do is take this new middle row that we got right here, and I'm gonna multiply this by two. So if I take two times zero, we should get zero. Two times one is two, two times zero is zero, and then two times negative one is negative two. So now when we add these together, we get one, zero, one, five. But now I need to adjust that one in the third entry. So I'm gonna go back to this bottom row, and in order to get rid of that one, we're gonna need a negative one. So I'm gonna multiply this bottom row right here by negative one. So negative one times zero, is zero, negative one times zero is zero again, negative one times one is negative one, and then negative one times three is negative three. Now when I add these together, one plus zero is one, here we'll get zero, here we'll get another zero, and then five minus three is two, and that's what we need our top row to look like with that one zero zero. So I'm gonna fill that in on top, one zero zero two, and then like we said before, now that we've got this in reduced row echelon form, hopefully the answers are standing out to us. This top row, the one is in the X column, so that's telling me X is two. This second row, the one is in the Y column, so that's telling me that Y is negative one. And this bottom row, the one is in the Z column, so that's telling me that Z is three. Now there is also a way that we can use our calculator to get a matrix in reduced row echelon form. So I'm gonna show you that with this exact same example that we've been working with. So I'm gonna fire up my calculator. So remember, to get to our matrix options, we go second and then we hit that X with a negative one on it. I'm going to edit this first matrix and we're dealing with a three by four matrix. 
and I'm going to take that augmented matrix that we can write out for that system of equations and enter it in. So we've got 3, negative 5, 1, 14. And then in our second row, we've got 1, negative 2, 1, 7. And then in our third row, we've got 2, negative 2, negative 1, and 3. So this is our augmented matrix that we wrote out before. Now I'm going to go second, quit. And then I'm going to go second matrix, and I'm going to go over to math. Now we're going to try to take this matrix and put it in reduced row echelon form. So I'm going to arrow down, and letter B right here, R, R, E, F, means reduced row echelon form. So I'm going to take that R, R, E, F, and then I'm going to go second matrix, and we just entered that information into matrix a, so I'm going to pick that one. So this is going to take matrix A and put it in reduced row echelon form. And we'll hit enter. So we get this reduced row echelon form matrix with the 1 in the X column. So X is 2. Second row has 1 in the Y column, so Y is negative 1. And third row has 1 in the Z column, so Z is 3. Now it's okay for us to check our answers this way because reduced row echelon form is unique for each system of equations, but it wouldn't be a good idea for us to use our calculator to do row echelon form because row echelon form is not unique, meaning that there are actually different types of row echelon form for each system. So the row echelon form that you end up with using pencil and paper might be different than the row echelon form that your calculator gives you. So it wouldn't be the best way to check your answer there. But like I said, reduced row echelon form is unique, so you are able to check your reduced row echelon form answers this way. Now in this example, I'm going to show you what finding infinitely many solutions looks like for this three variable system. The first thing we're going to do with it is take this system of equations and turn it into an augmented matrix. So we're going to look just at the numbers involved. So in my top row, I've got 1, 1, 1, 3. My second row is going to go 2, 1, 4, 8. And then my bottom row is going to go 1, 2, negative 1, 1. Now we're working towards reduced row echelon form, but before we can get to reduced form, we first have to put this matrix in row echelon form. So I'm going to work on that first. Remember, top row for row echelon form, we want to have a leading one in that first column, and this top row does, so we're just going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave that 1, 1, 1, 3 as the top row, and I'm going to put a mark next to that one so that I know that I used that row. And I'm going to go to that middle row, 2, 1, 4, 8, and we need to zero out that 2 that's in the first entry. So in order to do that, we're going to need a negative 2. So I'm going to take the top row times negative 2. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Now we add these together and we get 0, negative 1, 2, 2. Now we want this negative one in here, we want that to be a positive one. So I'm going to take this row and divide everything by negative one. So we get 0, 1, negative 2, negative 2. Now I'm going to enter that in as my new second row here as we're building this row echelon matrix. And I'm going to put a mark next to that row so that we know that we used it. And then we're down to the bottom row. 1, 2, negative 1, 1. The first thing I want to do is zero out that one in the front, so I'm going to need a negative one. So I'm going to take that top row that we had, and I'm going to multiply by negative one. So negative one times one is negative one. Negative one times one is negative one. Negative one times one is negative one. And negative one times three is negative three. Now we add these together, and we get zero, one, negative two, negative two. Now I need to zero out that one that's in the second entry. And in order to do that, I'm going to need a negative one there. But I have to be careful because I don't want to change that zero that we just got from our first entry. So I'm going to use this new middle row that we got right down here. And I'm going to multiply by negative one. So then we get zero, negative one, two, two. Now when we add these together, we get zero, 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 zero. So we get that bottom row to have all zeros in it. And that's what's going to tell us that we have infinitely many solutions. But we're not done. There's a special way that we have to write our answer when we end up with an infinitely many solutions case. 
And here's what's happening. Because we got that bottom row to be all zeros, normally we would look for there to be a one in that Z column so that we would know what that Z value is. But since there's not, that means that Z doesn't have any restrictions on it. So as we're thinking about getting our ordered triple, that Z can be any value. So we're just gonna leave it as a variable. I'm just gonna leave it as Z. But then based on that Z value, we need to figure out what our X value would look like and what our Y value would look like. So I'm gonna look at this middle row right here and I'm gonna put the variables back in. So we're gonna get Y minus two Z equals negative two. And I'm trying to figure out right now what my Y value looks like. So I wanna solve this equation to get Y alone. So I'm gonna add that two Z over to the other side. So my Y value is two times that Z value minus two. And that's what I'm gonna fill in as this Y value in this ordered triple here. So two Z minus two. Now I'm gonna go to that top row, that one, 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 three row, and I'm gonna put the variables back in there. So X plus Y plus Z equals three. Now we actually wanna take this equation and get it so that there's only two variables in there, and we're basing things off of this Z value. So I wanna rewrite this equation so that it has an X in it and Z in it. So we're gonna get rid of that Y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this two Z minus two right here that we just said Y was equal to in the previous step, and we're gonna plug that in for our Y value in this equation. So then this is gonna say x plus two z minus two plus z equals three. And now we're gonna take this and we're gonna solve it to get x alone. Now we can combine this two z and this z in here. So we get x plus three z minus two equals three. I'm gonna add that two over to the three. So we get x plus three z equals five. And then I'm going to subtract that three z over to the other side. So we get X equals negative three Z plus five. So that's my X value that I'm gonna put in here in this ordered triple, negative three Z plus five. So this is our ordered triple for this infinitely many solutions case here. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching.